All right, guys, a little update on my Chinese mini skid here. Uh, yesterday, I was trying to run it. I noticed the power, it was, seemed like it was running funny. So the, uh, I have a little digital thermometer. So I shot each cylinder with it to make sure they were, it was hitting on both cylinders. And the, this cylinder was not, not running at all. Um, pulled the change the spark plugs. The spark plugs were pretty fouled. Um, so those are the old ones. I'm surprised they actually have NGK plugs in it from the factory. Um, but I swapped the plugs out, tried that, didn't, didn't seem to change anything. Um, made sure it had spark, shocked the hell out of myself, checking the spark. Um, made sure it had fuel had fuel that didn't, didn't seem to do anything. Um, so I ended up basically deciding that I could either pull the thing apart and it's probably either rings, head gasket, or valves. I did pull the valve cover off and check the, uh, check the, the lash on the valves. Um, and there is, you know, there, they are, in spec, I believe. Um, there is a little bit of play, so it's not like I got a valve stuck open. They move when I crank the motor over, all that type of stuff. So I don't think it's valves. Uh, I think it's either head gasket or the rings are shot somehow. This motor only has five and a half hours on it, so I don't know how that's possible. Um, I don't know why this happened. I mean, I hasn't been super hot here. I haven't run the thing super hard for a super long time. Um, so anyway, I decided the easiest route and quickest route to getting it back up and running would be to go and buy a Predator motor. I, want, I was gonna buy a Honda motor, but you can't get them anywhere locally uh, in any reasonable amount of time. So Predator motor, I got the extended warranty. So if that one stops working, we pull it out and take it back. Um, so it's taken me about, I don't know, two hours to get this motor out. Um, and that's the first time ever doing it. So I did go through and like label all the wires, you know, where they go, solenoid. Uh, this is some additional stuff I was adding. I'm, I'm gonna add some cooling fans to this thing because I think that's the only thing that would really cause it to overheat. Uh, these go to the, the solenoid on the carburetor, the starter solenoid. Um, this is the ground, I believe. Yep, engine ground. Um, there's the coupling for the uh, hydraulic pump and I gotta get that off the old motor. I gotta unbox the new motor. Um, I took a, to, to get this out getting, I chose to do the engine bolts cause I don't know how I would ever line these up once I, if I were to pull this whole plate off of here. So I just did the engine bolts cause you can see them. It was kind of a, kind of a pain to get to them with the hydraulic lines. This side was easier than that side. Um, but I got them out and the 16 millimeter um, came out relatively easily. Just like I said, it's hard to get to them. Um, and I took a one by four piece of I was a little worried about the sending unit on the fuel gauge here, um, getting messed up, dragging this motor out of here. So I put this on here, this, and I just laid it in there and basically slid the motor out. It would have been a lot easier if I took the, the muffler off. I'm gonna take the muffler off when I, put it, when I put the new one in, just because fitting between these is tight. Um, but otherwise, so far so good. I also got, um, when I do my cooling fans and any other accessory stuff, I may put an electric fuel pump in here. I have this one just laying in the bottom here. I haven't done anything with it yet. But I'm gonna add this little, uh, it's like a fuse panel. I haven't put the fuses in it yet, but it hooks to the negative and the positive side of the battery. And um, I ran it up to a switch right there. So it's gonna be like an accessory power switch so I can basically turn the fans on and off. And the, um, like if I add the fuel pump, I can turn them on and off uh, as well as it'll you know hook to the battery disconnect. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, old motor's out, gonna unbox a new motor and prep it to go in and hook everything back up.
so I will come back in a little bit. All right, got the Predator motor in, mounted up, wired up. Um, it's almost identical to the old Rado, Rado, whatever it is, 739. Um, the main difference that has held me up is the shaft is a different diameter. Um, the shaft on this motor is one inch. The shaft on that motor is one and an eighth. So I ordered a sleeve to go from one inch to one and an eighth with a key. Um, so that should fix that issue. Um, ordered, it off, ordered it off Amazon. I'll link it down below. Hopefully that solves the problem. Um, had, I took the muffler off. It's easier to take the muffler off, getting it in and out. Um, probably should have done that, taking it out, but I didn't. But um, And I am going to have to use the muffler off of the old motor and not the muffler that came with the Predator. Or that came, yeah, because it goes, the muffler for the Predator exits that way. And I need it to exit that way through that hole right there. Um, so I got to got to reuse the old muffler, but that's fine. It, it fits. I already, you know, mocked it up. Um, and yeah, I mean, the bolts getting to the bottom are kind of a pain. Um, definitely label all your wiring when you're taking stuff in and out. Um, I did that and hooked everything back up like it was. And I did, you know, crank it over a few minutes ago. And uh, just uh, so it does. <laughs> Spins it over. So that's, I don't have the fuel line hooked up. I don't have throttle cables hooked up. I don't have a lot of stuff hooked up yet. Um, and I gotta go, I gotta stop working today, but that's where we're at. Um, so yeah, so far so good. over the shaft and a keyway and this guy just slides right on just like that and then this goes on here and we are good to go <laughs> <laughs> 